this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God bless. Love you. Hey, everybody. Hey, I'm glad you're back. Um, keeping you in prayer, and I hope you're doing the same concerning this pestilence, this pandemic, uh, this COVID-19, uh, this once was considered maybe not as harmful to a lot of people, but it's, it's showing its, its ugly face, and it's very harmful, very contagious, very dangerous. And I just want to lift everybody up in prayer as much as possible, uh, try to stay at home. Uh, I know there was a, the president had aspiration of the uh, Easter Sunday and people packing up the, uh, the uh, sanctuaries out there. And now we realize that that was just an aspiration. And it's not something that any of us want to do because we don't want to put our brothers and sisters and our children at, at harm because we're given an opportunity to do maximum damage by us packing out different facilities. I do encourage you all to uh, lift up all your ministries out there. Um, some people probably didn't recognize it, but those big sanctuaries, those small sanctuaries, uh, cause money to operate. So many ministries have things set up to to uh, give online. And I, rec I do recommend you do that. I do encourage you to do that because those ministries also have to pay the staff and they're gonna need they're gonna need the money. And even to keep the lights on. Even though I do hope that both those with the big safety words uh, have cut the lights off in the big area and so I use the smaller proportions to operate, but those uh, facilities, I remember when I was in World Changes, they were saying the, the, the electrical bill is like, whoo, <laughs> off the charts because it takes so much to, uh, so much energy to light that place up, keep it, keep air conditioning and everything else on. So uh, just remember if you can uh, continue to support your ministry out there, your pastor. Uh, because some of them, especially the ones that are full time, I mean, this, this ministry is their job. And uh, therefore, uh, they're going to be in the same situation as far as income coming in. So do what you can. That's all I can say, you know. Uh, but I, when we, 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 the study we did on the 28th of March, uh, we came up with like four sections, or four segments or sessions out of that and I'm doing something different this time I'm actually putting the fourth set session or segment uh, out first because at the end of that segment we start talking about the shift in paradigm concerning the church and how we operate now just basically talk about the fact is that we're not having the opportunity to to come in the big sanctuaries and fellowship together because of the danger we could have with that pestilence in the land. But I wanted to uh, tell you that there's a, a unique opportunity here. One of the things was that the ministries, the church, the saints have for years come together on Sundays and midweek services to fellowship. But one of the things that uh, I want to, to or we brought up to attention was that where the enemy meant for this to be bad, God has turned it around for something good. What what do I mean? Okay, so if we've been so accustomed to, to come to the sanctuary, allow the work of the ministry be done in the sanctuary and less on the outside. This, this is caused in a situation where the individuals in the congregation are now functioning on the outside.
to do the work of the ministry. Been forced to do it. Uh, what I mean? You know, the whole purpose of ministries and ministry gift is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, right? Uh, but a lot of cases, traditionally, and I think we talked about in the last segment, we've been, we've been more trying to do everything to a degree inside the, the sanctuary. And we use media and so forth to reach out to, to people who don't come to the sanctuary, but the, the focus has been for the majority of the, of the believers to come together in the sanctuary, in the building, to worship, to pray, uh, to, to baptize, uh, to, to counsel uh, individuals, to pray over individuals. And is it possible, I just, please think about that children, is it possible that we rely too much on going to a facility opposed to doing the work out of the facility? Have we come to the point where we depend too much on the fivefold ministry to do everything to include praying over somebody, baptizing someone, doing the communion, uh, doing the different things that Christ asks us to do? And have we come so fixated and depending on that, that we fail to recognize that God is with you. You're supposed to be equipped. We're supposed to be equipped to go out from the building. We come together to fellowship, iron shop with iron, but then to go out and do the work of the ministry. And the work of the ministry, is it not unreasonable to believe that in the work of the ministry, you're supposed to minister to somebody for salvation? You, to sit in the congregation. You the one supposed to pray for somebody sick. You, people in the congregation. You supposed to be able to go and baptize somebody that needs to be baptized instead of waiting for a special event, special Sunday, uh, where the church is saying, "Hey, we're going to do baptizing this this day." Where maybe that ain't, maybe a person don't have that much time, and, and it's time for them to receive salvation. You minister salvation. It's time to get them baptized. You go ahead and baptize them. It's time for somebody to sick you pray for. You see what I'm saying is, have we come to the point that maybe we thought maybe we were just depending on the saints, the, the, the ministers, the, 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 the ministries to do all the things that we're supposed to do as well to include prayer. See now what we have is a situation where you are forced to pray at home. Not to sit there, you know, you know, a lot of kids sit there and, and we'll, somebody said, pray for me. You, you say, I'll pray for you. And some people not, they forget to pray for the person. They're not willing to pray for them right then and there. And then there's some people that actually say, well, let's pray right now because that way we don't have to forget. Or some said, come to the sanctuary. But now we're realizing we can, maybe it's right now. <laughs> it's for us to realize that our first sanctuary it's our home. And and I know it feel, we talk about this in the study, does it feel more good to, to do, to come to church and be seen and allow the, the building to be the, the, doing the work of the ministry? And forgetting the fact is that the prayer warrior prays at home too. You come together in fellowship and pray together corporately, but you're also supposed to be able to do that at home or anywhere else you do outside those buildings. You're supposed to study. There's some people who got Bibles that they only use and pick up when they go to church. They, they leave it in the car so they won't forget. So when they go to church, they have the, the Bible in the car. That means they don't look at it until they show up to church. Even some of us got the apps, don't even look at the Bible or listen to the Bible. We got audio and everything else now. And some people don't even pay attention to reading the Word until they show up to church. And maybe this is one of the times where God is saying, God is going to use this opportunity to, to remind all of us, you individually grow by studying the Word of God. You individually are supposed to be able to minister the Word of God. You individually are supposed to be able to minister salvation, pray for the sick, Lay hands on the sick. Lay hands on one another. Huh? 
do we, do we, you know, do we get a point where we need somebody who have a license to do that? Opposed to the fact is that you can do that. Don't you know what I mean? We're the body of Christ. We're not this, there's this different calls, but you know, there's a situation right now that your calling, all the call and expectations you have from other people are no longer available. So now it's you in your home where you pray. You, your home where you study the Word of God. You do the work of the ministry. And we, as a corporately, separately from, separate from one another physically, are praying corporately to, to, to defeat this pestilence. We. And we're doing it in the secret place. Not seen by men. Have we got to the point that maybe we're more finding in our flesh to be seen by people? Opposed to sitting there doing it, just understand that God is not looking for you to do it openly. And the reason I want to do that, and I'm going to do it quick, I'm sorry, but hold on a lot, is that my, Matthew chapter 6, I was, I want to read this to you. We did cover it in the, in the sanctuary, in the study, but I want to read this to you. Uh, and I want you to see and think about this. That there's the opportunity for the Son, or the Son of God, the manifestations of the sons of God to rise up and not contain themselves in the box. Amen? Look at this. This is in Matthew chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 1 to 15. And look at this real quick. Uh, Take heed, listen to this, that you do not your alms before men, meaning to be seen by men, to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father, who? God in heaven. Therefore, when thou dost thy alms, look at this, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogue. The synagogue is the sanctuary. The synagogue is the place where you go to worship. All right? And in the streets, that they may have glory of men being seen by men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Is it possible that we've been more focusing on being seen by other people? That we're more comfortable to come corporately and pray corporately so everybody can see that you're praying? Because they're not going to see that in your home. But the point is, it's not about praying to people, being seen by people, is it? Look at this, verse 3. But when thou does his arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand does. Meaning, the other parts of the body of Christ don't need to see when you pray for somebody, when you say you're going to pray for somebody. They don't need to see that you show up every time the church door is open. That's not what it's all about. If you're trying to get your recognition and your praise on by letting people see what you do in serving the Lord, God is not, that's not, that's not something that God is, uh, Impressed with. Think about it. I just want you to think about this. It says in verse 4, Thy arms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Let God do the glorifying you, as opposed to you trying to be glorified and be seen of men. I'm saying right now, because of this separation, this is a time where we are all together secretly praying to the Father and, and, and lifting up the name of Jesus to defeat this pestilence. We're doing it and we don't need to be seen by people. We need to just do it because it's the Father we're praying for. It's the Father we like for deliverance from. And that's what we need to do. Think about it. Look at this. Verse 5. When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray, to pray, standing in the synagogue, in the church, in the assembly of men, in the place of worship, that in on the street corners, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Have we got to that point too? Have we all become conditioned? I'm talking about the ones that don't smoke, don't chew, don't hate nobody to do, but you do want to hang with the people that do and let them see you pray. Let them see you sit there and worship and lift your holy hands up. Do you hold your holy, lift your holy hands up at home when it's just you and God? Do you worship Him when nobody else can see it? 
Have we, have we come to the point that we're more comfortable to be seen of glorifying God opposed to glorifying Him in secret? And this the time that this situation has caused where we lift up His name, praise His holy name, and say, Lord, deliver us. If we didn't recognize that that's the time, we need to do it now. We need to start doing it in your home. You don't need to be seen by other people. You need to go and pray and, and, and preach the gospel to yourself, preach the gospel to your family members. And I'm talking about the ones in your home. In every church, every minister, all the people that's out there. This is the time where the body of Christ rise up. And, and, and do the work of the ministry. This is the time when we sit there and we show to God, because that's the only person we're trying to impress. Ain't nobody else we're trying to impress. It's God Almighty. This is the time. Man, I want to, God said He wants to get this out. We have become too comfortable in staying in the sanctuary, too comfortable in doing things with one another, be seen by one another. When God said, I'm not impressed by what you be seen or how you're seen by other people, I'm impressed by how you coming to me. He wants this out. This tape may be a little longer because I make, I'm talking a little longer, but I think this is important. Pray at home. Pray to God about this pestilence. Pray and lay hands on your own family members that's in your house. Lift up and pray for your brothers and sisters. And I'm talking about your real brothers and sisters as well as your body to Christ. Pray for this world. Pray for this country. And pray it and don't have to be seen by anybody else. It is all about praying to Him. It's Him that's going to do it. It's Him we're looking for deliverance from. We don't need to sit there and have to come into a sanctuary and do it. I, I, that's great to come to fellowship. He said, forsake not the assembly of others. But in this point of situation, you are forced, recommended, encouraged to stay at home. Stay at home, but don't let the enemy think that the body of Christ is not at work. This is the time where we sit there and rise and shine to the occasion. This is the time we sit there and let people know we're praying. We're praying the Holy Spirit is on us at home. Huh? <laughs> I'm telling you, man, he wants this out. And I'm going to put it out. Because this, this, this is verse 6 that said, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Look at this, your secret place, your place where it's just you and God. And when thou hast shut thy doors, pray to thy Father which is in heaven in secret. And thy Father which sees in secret shall reward thee openly. Let the world find out that this pestilence is going away because the body of Christ in secret is praying for deliverance. We need to brag or boast about it because it's not us going to do it. It's him. But we need to lift him up in prayer in our closets, in our secret place, not seen by people. Huh? He said, when our prayers, when our prayers, but when ye pray, use no vain, not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for much speaking. Be not Ye therefore lack unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask Him. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There's the power. We're praying to the power. We're praying we're delivered from the power. We're lifting up his holy name. And we're doing it in secret because he will reward us openly for what we do secretly. When we get back into normal, we go back and together corporately pray and lift up his name corporately. But just don't forget, you can do that also at home. And maybe that's what he's trying to show. A lot of cases, we don't do that until the next Sunday or the next service. Think about it. The last piece, too, and don't forget this, in 16, he says, 14, For if you forgive men their trespasses, you have to Father also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. 
and that's the other piece. He's, you know, I guess that's big, big because he's sitting there teaching us how to pray. Then he's putting his other piece in here about don't forgive those who trespass against you. That's what goes into the Lord's prayer anyway. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who debt who sin against us. Let's let's do the same thing. Whoever trespass against us, let's start remember. He wants us to forgive. This is the time, and you do it in the secret place. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I knew it was a little longer because I talk long in the commentary, uh, but I wanted to make sure this word is out. He wanted to make sure this word is out. I'm believing that by faith that this is what he wants put out. So it's out there. And we're breaking out to talk about it again. This is a time for the body of Christ not openly be seen by men, but in faith. Lifting up Jesus, letting the Holy Spirit dwell in us in the secret place, in our closets, in our homes, praying to the Father in heaven to deliver us, not only for this pestilence, but any other trials and all this go through. You don't forget your ministries out there, especially your full-time pastors. Please remember to, to, to give to them and uh, through online services that they have provided for you or just mail in a check to them. But they need it. It's not about just us sitting there allowing them to... You remember that's what the Levites were. The Levites were supposed to have been able to, to do the work and take care of the temple. And then the rest of the tribes of Israel were supposed to bring in resources for those Levites so they can do the work of the ministry. Well, you got a pastor. He's full time. Make sure him and his staff Make sure that building that you love to worship in gets the resources to pay. Pay someone got mortgage they got to pay for. The devil got to pay the utilities. Uh, the building got to meet that payroll. So let's make sure we help them out. Okay. I right, hope you enjoyed the video. And sorry for being a little longer than normal, but I think this is what God wants us to to think about. And I think I'm gonna bring it up again too because it is a good point they brought out in the study. Are we so accustomed to being seen by men? Never forget that the work is out there. And that the prayer and the secrets and the asking of God is in the secret place, in our closets at home. Amen. Alright, God bless you and enjoy this video. And if 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 you if you don't have time to see the rest of it because it took too long, I hope I covered everything that needed to be covered. I love you. We're gonna pray, we're gonna beat feet this this pestilence in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless. Bye-bye. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, God gave me uh, be, this, this 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 virtual church just might be it. This oh, might no, be yeah. the paradigm shift. It you is know, because all these churches are going to that. Yes, and sir. At, let me tell you, say this. Look at the money that is available to the churches now. Yes, sir. Yeah, because there's no one going to that building. That building is really obsolete. Woo! Yes. Woo! Yes. So the resources can go back to the people who need it. Woo! Woo! Hey, yeah. hey, brother, brother right, Addison. Uh, I'll, right. Matter of fact, I'd like you to turn to, I'd like you to read for and close out on this one. Uh, Matthew, okay. Matthew's chapter 6. I don't, I don't have that post. I do have that posted. One second. No, but I don't have I, I got I don't have everything. I wanted Matthew six. If y'all could turn to it. Just use your Bible. Matthew six. Yeah. You can't see it Matthew on that kid. One through what? Well, I want it all the way to the uh Amen thirteen. Woo. Okay, I have my glasses, so bear with me. Matthew six one it reads Take heed that you do not that that ye do not your alms before men mm. to be seen of them. Whoa! Otherwise, uh -huh. you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Wait, now stop right there, son. So maybe if that's what we've been doing, because I always yes. used to think about it as the marketplace, but this one right here says seen before men. Yes. Is that, is that a place where we can go so we can be seen? Yeah, I mean, uh, Brother Jackson had mentioned this earlier. You know, that, uh, mm. what, what, you know, there, there's people have, some people have false motives. 
Wow. And they're doing it to, to make themselves look out, you know, stand out. Wow. Go ahead, Key Reed. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. So 6 2. Therefore, when thou dost thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. Hmm. That's to do in the synagogues. Treats. Oh, he was talking about the church stand, didn't he? Glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. I'm sorry. So he, he, he is saying synagogue, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I did not catch that before. I always kept the street elder. I was always every time I read that scripture, I kept thinking about, you know, Brother Jackson, they're going out in the street in the marketplace and they could be seen. But right. he's also was talking about the place of worship. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Go ahead. Says, but when thou dost alms, let thy left hand know right hand doeth. Hmm. That the alms may be in secret. Uh-huh. And who which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Okay. Well, no. Then when thou prayest. Thou shalt not be as an hypocrite are. Mm -hmm. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue. In the church! In the corners of the streets. Woo! They be seen of man. What? Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Oh, Lord, Brother yeah. Jackson. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into the closet. Uh huh. I have shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Mm. But when ye pray, use not vain repetition as the heathens do. Mm -hmm. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Oh, Lord. But not for like unto them. For your father knoweth that knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Okay. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father which art in heaven. Yes, sir. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for mm. thine in the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And mm. you know, Pastor, I like reading that a different way. Go ahead. I like reading that that prayer. Like, uh, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom has come. Yes, sir. Thy will yes. is done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for our daily bread. Thank you for giving us for forgiving us of our debt. Give our debtors for leading us not unto temptation, but delivering us from evil. Mm. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. That's how I like it. Um, wow. Because that prayer has manifested when yeah. Christ died on the cross and. Um, the redemptive work has taken place. Mm. This was prior to that. So that's why I, I read that prayer in that manner. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I mean, the kingdom of God is manifested in the earth. This here. The wow. kingdom of God is in the earth. He said, many of you would not die before you see the kingdom of God come in power. On the day that the Holy Ghost fell in Pentecost, I believe that that was the manifestation of that kingdom. Yes, sir. It didn't have anything to do with the external rule. It has something to do with what was happening on the inside of us. What moves us? Well, we are the subjects of that kingdom, and we manifest the glory of God by obeying Him. Mm. And we're doing that. We're going to do. We're doing that now. We're doing yes. that now. And that's that. And that is my purpose for 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 praying that prayer in that Amen. manner. You know, and, and I thank God for that manifestation of that prayer. I thank Amen. God for those saints during that time before Pentecost, praying that prayer that it manifests. Yes, sir. Wow. You know, and also this, he told me to go and make sure you have given this last piece too. 14 and 15, he said, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. 
he so want to make sure that right there. What 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 is what is what is he saying? And for this dispensation, you know, because he has already forgiven my sins, past, present, and future. But what are my trespasses? Are are these uh, my acts of 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 selfishness towards common man? Well, you know, the thing I look at that always is the fact is that you are forgiven your past, future, and present. But if you don't want to receive, you receive that gift with understanding you're supposed to forgive others too. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you, I, and I'm not, I'm not, uh... And I know, I know you're not, but I'm saying is that it's, it's, it's like, I know you're saying the dispensation. I was thinking is, he's trying to make sure we understand, forgive people. And because, yeah. because we both yeah, love and, them. And, 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 and looking at it, and, and this is, here we go. We boil it right back to love. And what gets me, no matter what someone does to me, I always am reminded of what God did for you. Right. That's a humble when, when I was downtrodden. Yeah. When I was, you know, a mortal enemy of God. When I was doing things that I don't even want to remember. Come on now. He yet saved me and forgave me, restored me, and established me and adopted me. Come on. Ain't that something? When I think about that, Woo. I cannot <laughs> hold a grudge against anybody, not for any period of time, you know, because that wears on me. That, that's a weight on me yes. that, that I, I, I just can't carry for a period of time. And that forgiveness has to take place. Come on, brother. <laughs> yeah. Hey, y'all, but you because know. <laughs> it, my, my spirit is not, is, is not the same. It's not anymore. It's not. So my 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 spirit can't rest until that happens, and I believe it 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 it, it uh it wears on me. It does. You know. Yeah. Now my, my my heart may be hurt, and uh and it may take a minute before I forgive somebody, but I forgive some. I I really forgive everybody. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, but I I I uh, also am given wisdom. So in those areas of, of pain, hurt, mistreatment, or anything like that, I remember that part, and I try to protect myself from that. Yes, sir. But it doesn't stop me from having a relationship with that person. I'm just a little more careful in the relationship that I have. Amen. And, uh, and even to a point over time, that forgiveness is no different than the forgiveness that God has given me, which is unconditional. It just... It just takes a minute <laughs> amen and and, and then the wrap it up is this certain factor that goes back to first, second chronicle when it's talking about saying if my people call my name is to seek my face and humble themselves i think humble is also forgiveness to your yes. fellow man uh but the other piece is just to wrap up so we could chew in there was i just i did not see when we we're talking about the church and this thing right here is the forcing people to to worship from home and, and to, to, to pray at home is that that Lord's Prayer and that, that whole Matthew 6 1. He was saying, yeah. Is you guys, maybe y'all got so accustomed to going to a place to be seen by men that you forgot why you're going there for. Amen. You know what I mean, Brother Jackson? It's all Amen. about worshiping nope. Him. And we come together, come, we come corporately, but we also do that at home. And if we're not doing that at home, because that because we don't not being seen, then we're missing the whole boat. Most of it is supposed to be in secret. Yes. So we'll close out yes. this and say it for the believers out there listening to this live, but listen to some video. God is sitting there saying is your power is in the secret place. Your power is communicating to him for this world, this situation. Pray. Seek his face. And then come back when it's all over with. Come fellowship corporately. But don't forget that that power is in the secret place. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, brother. I held you up a lot, but if y'all want, y'all want to do communion. If I want to do communion with me, I do it on my own. You know, we got time. I'd have to go grab some stuff. Go get your cup. Yeah, hold get, on a second. Get the cup. Hold on a second. Hey, brother Jackson.
I, I'm gonna I'm close. I'm gonna close the tape here so that you can do the communion because sometimes you get cut off and all. And, and I like to put it in the. I like to put yours in the uh, video, but because of the some reason it breaks up sometimes. I don't know why. So just let you know, I want you to do the communion, but if it, if it don't come out right, I won't put it on the video. <laughs> That's all right. But but you That's annoyed right. it. Hey, look, I think I got me your your favorite uh, communion cup full. <laughs> <laughs> that's a blessing, brother. You know how to make it. You know how to make it. And you know how to pray. So we give them time to go get their stuff. And if you do the communion, then we're good. Hey, the other thing while they're doing that, your church, are they doing any video or live video? Are they doing services on the internet? Yeah, my uh, brother Phil at Sandy Valley is putting some things on YouTube. Uh, he sends us messages. As a matter of fact, while we've been on, uh, I've got two calls from him. So I'm thinking he probably be sending out a message that he probably uh, is uh, either has already downloaded a message for today, um, will download one for today. So yeah, they're they're doing some things. It said um, if you probably just go to Sandy Valley Baptist Church, you know, there in Warner Robins on YouTube, you should be able to locate. It. Okay, you know, if, if if you want to, you can also let them use. Yeah, you can use this uh this thing right here if you want to go live service. Maybe the people want to dial in. I mean, we can. I mean, I can give you the password and everything. If he wants to do a yes. service, you know, where people can come and fellowship and you know why he's ministering live and participate. Yes. Uh, you tell him we can offer this up to him if he wants. Cause he probably got okay. he'll blow it up because it'd be a whole bunch of people. But he could take he could take up to, uh, I think I think I, right now I got paid for twenty five. But we can go up to a hundred and even more, uh, in the in the long run. But did, or he can actually get the service himself and have a church service with it. Okay. Just to let him know about it, you know. Okay. Okay. You you ready, Elder All Johnson? Right. What the hell is that? I'm, it ought to have me looking out my window, <laughs> seeing if it was raining. <laughs> I know it. What is that? What's going on, Elder? What's that? <laughs> so he don't, it is rain. It. it is it rain. Is rain. <laughs> it's rain. Okay. You got your cup and it's everything. Over here. <laughs> you you ready? <laughs> Are you ready it's for the cup? <laughs> <laughs> I hope, it, I hope it ain't raining in your house. <laughs> That's how I go to sleep. <laughs> okay. Hey, you got you, you got you got your bread. <laughs> All right, brother Jack, you gonna close us out. Good for the chameleon. <laughs> All right, let's grab the bread and let us pray. Heaven, Lord, you are worthy to be praised, honored, and glorified. We thank you for the revelation and the message that you've given us today. Uh, those who are hearing the message immediately and also those who will hear the message later on. Lord, we know that your word returned to you void. And so we praise you and give you the glory and the honor for the great things, the spiritual things that will happen as a result of not only this message, but all of the messages that are going out today and in the future for your glory dear jesus we take this bread now and we we give you we give you praise for who you are son of god savior of all mankind king of kings of lords you said that whenever we do this to remember you we do remember you now glory honor and praise break Amen. Amen. And now, let's take the contents of this cup. Dear Jesus, bless, bless those who honor you. Bless those who are in service to you. Bless those who 
uh, are in faraway lands, dear Jesus, who are in dangerous places, who are promoting your word. Do this in service. So bless the rest of us who may be uh, still growing and maybe still babes at heart. Yes. We can grow and be your warriors as you would have us to be. It's like you told the, dis the disciples that when they the ceremony, and for those of us in the future, when we have the ceremony, to remember you that to recognize that this is a representation of your pure blood that is poured out for all of mankind. And that for those of us who believe in you, the way back to the Father. So thank you, Jesus, for giving us this very, very important ceremony. We say all these things in your precious name. Spoken and unspoken. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brothers. God bless you, brothers. Bless those who will see the presentation of this this service. Praise God. Praise God. Y'all be blessed. Be blessed. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Amen.